your body now has more anaerobes and that is infectious bacteria that throws off your pH, that throws off the healthy balance that your body is used to and boom you get bv boom you get a yeast infection right because your body is thrown off the balance is thrown off and it's super important for men to have good penile hygiene because under the foreskin is a bacterial haven okay so <laughs>
um, the man to have an erection. And so erectile dysfunction could be a problem with any of those factors. And so someone asks, what's the relationship with testosterone, right? How did testosterone impact one's ability to have sex? So testosterone is a hormone that's actually released um, during sex to help improve arousal and help improve stamina. And so when a man has low testosterone, it does put them at risk of having erectile dysfunction, right? And low testosterone levels has actually been linked to the same chronic conditions that have play a role in electrolyte dysfunction, right? We also have reduced blood flow to the penis caused by certain chronic conditions. So what are these chronic conditions? We have high blood pressure. We have diabetes. We have high cholesterol. We have clogged blood vessels, which stands for atherosclerosis. We have multiple sclerosis. We have obesity, metabolic, oh, I said that word right metabolic syndrome, tobacco use, alcoholism, and other substance abuse, right? We have all of these health conditions that can predispose an individual from experiencing electrolyte dysfunction. Now, the psychological conditions that predisposes an individual range from depression, anxiety, stress, relationship stress also can cause an individual to not be able to have an erection. And one um, study actually showed that communication problems could actually cause one to experience ED. So you want to talk to your partner, men. You want to talk to them because when I tell you, y'all like to keep quiet, but your communication skills are messing up your bedroom skills, okay? So erectile dysfunction actually increases an individual to experience premature ejaculation. All right, next topic. I'm excited about this one because I just know I've heard a lot of stories of men having a lot of talk and a lot of game, but in the bedroom... Mm. Disappointment. <laughs> so I just want to shed some light on it because actually research have shown that occasional premature ejaculation is actually normal. <laughs> Who would have thought? It's actually very normal. And the average time from the beginning of intercourse to ejaculation is actually five minutes. So I know a lot of men, you know, talk a lot of game, but it's actually normal for one to ejaculate a little bit sooner rather than later. But there are one out of five men who experience ejaculation under a minute. And that's that's something we need to talk about because I know a lot of men are having a lot of this issue. Um, they're not speaking about it, but their partners are. And it's getting a little chatty right now. And so I think it's really important for men to feel comfortable to talk to your PCP because you're also not being able to satisfy your partner the way that you should. And it's a lot of times it's brushed off like, oh, I, I don't know, I just was really nervous or, oh, you're so fine, you're so attractive that I'm not able to, you know, with, have a long stamina. Cool. But if this is a current thing 24 7, there's a problem, right? But first, let's go back to the science and what is even ejaculation, right? I know. Ejaculation is actually controlled by the central nervous system. And so obviously there's a cognitive behavioral component to it to have someone be sexually aroused, right? It's mental first. But signals are then sent to the spinal cord and the brain when a man is sexually stimulated. Then, when they reach a certain level of excitement, that signal is then sent to the reproductive organs of the man and causes semen to be released from the penis. This is what ejaculation is. But when it happens prematurely, that's what's called premature ejaculation because it's happened before it's time. <laughs> All right, so there are two phases of ejaculation. We have emission and expulsion. Emission is when sperm moves from the testicles to the prostate, mixes with seminal fluid, to make semen. So expulsion is when the muscles at the base of the penis contract and forces the semen out of the penis, right? And so when it comes to premature ejaculation, men may actually experience this during masturbation as well. And so if you are experiencing this, please contact your PCP or contact your urologist. This is a normal and treatable condition, right? Because some men actually experience rapid ejaculation and other times they experience normal ejaculation ejaculation. It could be a variety of the both of them. But if you are experiencing it more than normal, then it's important to contact your PCP, your urologist, because it's nothing to be ashamed of. So what are the
the biological factors that could impact an individual to experience premature ejaculation? All right, let me tell y'all. So one, abnormal hormone levels, abnormal brain chemical levels called neurotransmitters. One neurotransmitter in particular, serotonin, could actually play a role where if there is a large amount of serotonin in the brain, it actually increases the time a man takes to ejaculate. But if there is a lower amount of serotonin in the brain, it shortens the amount of time. So there's just been a link over there. That's not the complete answer, but that is a link. Also, inflammation and effect of the prostate or the ure urethra, urethra <laughs> could impact a man from ejaculating as well and also inherited traits. So those are all biological causes that you want to ask your PCP if you fall under. Also the psychological causes could be early sexual experiences, right? Sexual abuse, depression, um, self-esteem like we mentioned again, poor body image. If you're feeling like you're not good enough for your partner, that could also make you have some type of anxiety in the bedroom where you are ejaculating prematurely, right? And also unrealistic expectations of what's supposed to happen in the bedroom. A lot of men, you know, resort to porn and so where they're not able to satisfy their fantasy their fantasies it could impact their actual reality so like i said one of three men experience premature ejaculation between the ages of 18 and 59 years old so it is normal yes so luckily for you men there are are methods to help you with this situation. Additional to going to counseling or sex therapy, there is psychological therapy, there is behavioral therapy, and two methods where I'm gonna leave a link below that you can read upon so you and your partner could do. There is the squeeze method <laughs> and then the stop and start method. And so I don't wanna really go into detail keeping it PG-13, but click the link below and you'll be able to you know, read upon it and be able to help your premature ejaculation problem, right? But most importantly, contact that PCP, contact that urologist if you are experiencing problems. This is just informational. Um, I just hope this was informative for you guys and you were able to learn something, my men and my woman. But come back next week, we're gonna combine these two topics and women together sexual health and talk about consent contraceptives the stigma behind st stis we're gonna do a live after it's gonna be exciting it's gonna be a good time so we'll see you guys next monday